uh, revolutionary greetings comrades uh, on the 18th of april we celebrated 43rd anniversary or 43rd independence yes there are questions that been raised to say what we celebrate uh, i watched one video uh, where one person was saying zimbabwe is a failed state we have dealt with this question but maybe we did not uh, do justice to the question in this video we will not uh, go into detail as well, but we will in the next video define the role of the state from a Marxist perspective. Uh, there's this this perception uh, where people confuse governance and uh, the state because when political parties campaign, <coughs> they parade their manifestos. They say we we'll deliver free houses, free education. We'll build infrastructure, we will pick up later, the streets will be clean. When they fail to do so, we then say the state has failed or Zimbabwe is a failed state. Uh, when uh, <coughs> governance is not happening according to the will of the people, uh, people then say that uh, uh, the state has failed or Zimbabwe is a failed state, which is not the case. Because when a councillor fails to deliver, when the government fails to provide uh, what it promised the people to provide, uh, that does not mean the state has failed. So there's this confusion that, uh, that is out there. When, when uh, the majority can't afford to buy basic uh, uh, goods, uh, others will say the Zimbabwean state has failed. It has never failed, at least <laughs> since it was established, it has never failed. Uh, we spoke about how the state emerged, so it has never failed. Yes, uh, uh, the government of Zimbabwe has failed to meet the needs of society as per its promises. That it has failed. There is no argument about that. ZANU-PF will, will uh, present its manifesto if you go to the, their 2018 manifesto on the things that they promised and on what is happening currently. Yes, uh, the government has failed. It has failed to rebuild the economy. It has failed to provide clean water to communities. It has failed to, make, to keep our lights on 24-7. It has failed on that score. And there's no debate about it. It has failed to, to, to maintain our infrastructure. It has failed to provide the meals to kids in our schools from poor backgrounds. It has failed to do so. There's no question about that. But that is not the state. <laughs> that, that is not the state. So that's where the confusion comes in. To say because you have high inflection, uh, 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 whether we have the highest inflection in the world or in the continent, <coughs> that on its own <laughs> is not, uh, we cannot then say the state has failed. No. As I'm saying, the government has failed to deliver what it ought to deliver to the electorate. On that score, it has failed. But the Zimbabwean state has not failed because the state as we define, is an organ of class rule. So the state has never failed the class that it represents. Uh, 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 because if, if we then say uh, the state has failed, we are basically saying the state has failed the class that it represents. That, 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 that is not the case in Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, I've got a document in front of me here. Not a document, but a thesis by Lenin. The State and Revolution. I just want to quote what he says. It quotes, Lenin quotes angels. And he says, I quote, The state is, therefore, by no means a power forced on society from without. Just as little as it is, just as little is it the reality of the ethical idea, the image and reality of reason, 
as Kenjan maintains. Rather, it is a product of society at a certain stage of development. It is the admission that this society has become entangled in an insoluble contradiction with itself, that it has split into irreconcilable antagonisms, which it is powerless to dispel. But, but in order that these antagonisms, these classes with the conflicting economic interests, might not consume themselves and the society in, in fruitless struggle, it became necessary to have a power seemingly standing above society uh, that would elevate the conflict and keep it within the bounds of order. And uh, this power arisen out of society by placing itself above it and alienating itself more and more from it is the state. Close quote. Uh, 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 I'm reading a chapter here. Uh, this quote is in a chapter. Uh, the state a product of the irreconcilability of class antagonisms. <clears throat> so the state is an organ of class rule. It represents and advances the interests of a class that it represents. That's the state. You, you, can, you can have time to read the works of learning, state and revolution. Read the definition of the state, the role of the state in society. You then <laughs> study the Zimbabwean state. It is the Zimbabwean state that has facilitated the looting, <laughs> as we saw on Al Jazeera, the gold. We have seen four episodes of how our minerals are looted in Zimbabwe. And those that benefit from the looted minerals are not mere new, the working class and peasants. Those that benefit are the class that the Zimbabwean state represents. So you cannot then argue and say the Zimbabwean state has failed when the looters find it easy to take our gold, pass through the airport, and take it to wherever they wanted to buy and elsewhere. So the state has not failed. Let me be specific. The Zimbabwean state has not failed the class that it represents. The Zimbabwean state does not represent the interests of the working class and the peasants. So, so the, 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 the guy who was uh, making a presentation uh, on some TikTok video, which I saw which was circulating, was giving five or seven reasons why he was saying uh, the state, the Zimbabwean state has failed, talking about um, a failure to conduct um, uh, democratic elections, a failure to provide basic services, uh, and so forth and so forth. He was talking about governance issues. <laughs> right? That's where the confusion is. As I have said, <clears throat> the government of Zimbabwe has failed the people of Zimbabwe. Not dispute about that. The Freedom Charter says, says the people shall govern. Right? And that the people of Zimbabwe are not governing themselves. <laughs> Those that are elected as we go to elections are elected as the representatives of the people in governing our country have failed. But the class that the Zimbabwean state represents has not been failed by its tool, the organ called the state, because the state is an organ. So the Zimbabwean state has not failed the class that it represents. We will, in the next video, we will try to find time to talk about the role of the state. This is why it's critical that uh, the working class and peasants must capture the state. It's very key. It is not about winning 
an election being a member of parliament uh, or being a councillor. It's about state power. At the moment, the working class and peasants in Zimbabwe do not have state power. We do not have. Ours is to capture the state. Once we capture the state, the state will then represent our interests as the working class and the peasants. This is why we talk of the dictatorship of the proletariat. We will expand in our next video. Please share your views uh, on your understanding of the state, the difference between the state and the governance. Write in the comment section. I am Mahuto Nicholas Mapena, General Secretary of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. Please like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Otherwise, red salute comrades.